Guys, it's good to be here with you. I hope uh, hope this is working. Okay, this is the first time I'm trying this from my house, and okay, and we'll. Oh, Ooh, you can tell that I'm monitoring myself. But yeah, first time trying this from uh, La Casa Philp. So it's good to be here with you. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my abode. Uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun one. So we don't have a we don't have a guest tonight per se, but I just wanted to take take some calls from some students um, and just kind of hear how you guys are doing. Hear how uh, you know the past week has been. Every week that goes by feels like just more and more stuff is changing, and um, that can be a lot. It's definitely been a lot for me. It's been a lot for my family. Just to the the constant unknown, like what's happening next, and and school keeps getting canceled and work keeps getting canceled and you still can't find freaking toilet paper anywhere and it's just you know it's just a lot so I just want to take some calls I uh, I apologize there's been a few people that have called so far and uh, I just now turned this on so if you called feel free to call anytime throughout this the number is 817-381-5475 Eight one seven three eight one five four seven five, and we're just gonna take some calls today and uh, just kind of have uh, some conversations. Um, Kayla, thank you, thank you. You think I look great? That's that's so kind of you. Tell us some bad dad jokes. I know too many. Oh, I just missed a call. I'm new to this who this whole uh, this whole Google call thing. If you tuned in last week, Edmund Mitchell, he's he's like the sensei of taking calls. He's just constantly taking calls, 24 hours a day. I think he's here. Oh, here we go. First call. Let's see if this works. Hello? Press 1. To send a voicemail, press 2. Hello? Hey. Hey, who is this? This is Megan Rosen. Megan, yes. Hold on. Why can't we hear you? We can hear you through the speaker. How do I? How do I put you through here? What about now? Can you hear me? Yes. There you are. Okay. Hold on. I gotta turn you way. I've got it playing on my computer. The live. So there we go. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. It's gonna be delayed. Megan, how the heck are you? Okay. I'm. I'm getting through. <laughs> yeah. How's it been? So Megan and I talked a little bit uh, either well, yesterday or the day before. Megan is your classic extrovert, is that right? Yeah, I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> this whole no social, yeah. like social distancing thing is getting the best of me. What's the most social distance trendy thing you did? Like, have you uh, had like Skype dates with any of your friends or anything like that? Uh, yeah, it was actually one of my friend's birthdays the other day, and his mom texted me and was like, hey, can you get, like, some kind of group FaceTime call or something? Yeah. So we did a birthday Zoom call for him. Nice. We, so we did that, and then, um, I've kind of been pushing the boundaries a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... My mom will actually allow us, me and my friends, to sit across the street from each other and talk to each other. Nice, yeah. <laughs> Sounds awesome. silly, but no, it's not. I was you never know. <laughs> I went to Chick Fil A today, and there was a um, there was two. It, they looked like high school uh, girls that were eating Chick Fil A, two parking spots apart, both sitting in their trunks, like yelling at each other. <laughs> And so, oh yeah, that's uh, been all over the internet. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, it's been like it's like a TikTok trendy thing for people to pull uh, their cars up in a parking lot and talk to each other. I've heard probably of where they got that idea. Yeah, that's definitely not an original <laughs> idea. This is like this is yeah. like an introvert's dream, though. Like I, I, I know. I'm just oh like in goodness. heaven. I'm like I love you all, but give me some space, like. <laughs> kind of nice. I mean, I do miss, I do miss all the students. Like that's, that's been tough. But, um, so what, what's your biggest piece of advice for all the extroverts out there? How do you, how have you been dealing with the oh. social distancing? I would say probably FaceTime is your best friend right now. Yeah. 
and working out has been my best friend too. That's the only way I'm getting through this. When I'm bored, I just find a random workout to do yeah. and I do it. <laughs> I feel like a lot of <laughs> people I go are on a doing run. that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like everyone's going to be more in shape coming out I of this know. thing. If, if we don't get anything out of it, we better be in better shape. We're going to all be jacked and uh, everybody's yeah. going to just be like <laughs> super extroverted and excited to see each other for a while. Yeah. So yeah, what's all the gyms are closed. So. Oh, I know. I this this is like right when all this started. I was thinking I'm going to take this opportunity and start. Like I have a gym membership and I only go very rarely, like once or twice a month. And I'm like I'm going to go every day. And then the next day it was like we're closed, which kind of makes sense, I guess. But yeah. So what mm -hmm. what's going to be once we're we're released from the prison here? What's going to be the first thing you go and do? Um, probably go hug my best friend because nice. I haven't been in six feet of them in over 14 days. I think at this yeah. point, I don't know what the count is now, but this is renovate live number three. So it's been, it's been at least 14 days, but I think we hit this point of yeah. staying in your home the Friday before. So it's been like, yeah, a solid yeah. 18 days, something like that. Okay. Last yeah, question. I got back from no, okay. no, go ahead. No, no. What were you going to say? I was going to say I got back from vacation in Florida and I hung out with my friends the next day. And then the next day, my doctor was like, stay inside. You're not allowed to see anyone. So everything was over from then. And I don't know what, I want to say that was March, like 17th or 18th. Jeez. Yeah. We got back from ski so retreat and it was like, like, stay home. So yeah. it was crazy. Okay. The last question is what, what advice do you have, um, for your fellow, fellow peers, uh, of, of growing in their faith? What, what have you been doing? What do you recommend to anyone who, uh, you know, no one's being able to go to mass right now. So what's your advice on, uh, how, how can we grow in our faith during this, this time that we're stuck at home? Um, I would say just pick a book of the Bible and just read it all the way through. I know I'm almost finished with Acts nice. for school because we actually have a Bible class at school. Oh, cool. So our assignment has to has been read through Acts and then we'll be starting I'll be starting Romans tomorrow. Nice. But I think that if you like read it from start to finish, like you really start to pick up on the themes of it. Yeah. And like I've seen through Acts that like Acts is all about, like, the Holy Spirit and, like, everyone's getting baptized. And it's just, like, yeah. it's crazy, actually, like, how fast everything was spreading. But um, you see how, like, Paul is, like, going through all these trials of all these people, like, persecuting him. And it's, like, crazy because so many people are, like, no, that's not real. Like, they don't believe what he's saying. Yeah. But, um, like, the Lord appears to him so many times and tells him, like, like, I'm with you, like, it's going to be okay. And so I think that, like, you can pick up, just like by reading one book of the Bible, you can pick up so many good messages that are going to, like, accompany you through this, like, crazy time that we're in right now. And yeah. just know that, like, we can lean on the Lord through all of this. That's so, so funny you say that. That's That was my, uh, I did a live show with um, Alob yesterday. And that, that was the piece uh -huh. of advice I gave was just pick one book of the Bible. I've been reading Hebrews um, which yeah. is, is like, yeah, just like you said, very similar. Paul's writings, a lot of times he was talking to people who were afraid and there's a lot mm -hmm. of people who are afraid right now. So that's really, really good advice that that's something we, we need to all do. And, and Paul's letters are a great place to start for anyone who's like, where do I yeah, start? For sure. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Oh. Um, that's funny that you're reading Hebrews though, cause our FDA at school, we're doing, an Instagram live every week. So yeah. we're doing Hebrews. Oh, so we're doing that's one awesome. chapter of Hebrews every week. Yeah. So on Sunday we did Hebrews one and it just had everyone like talk about that. And everyone picked up something different from it, which is awesome. And we yeah. just shared and it was so good. That's awesome. You have to keep me updated yeah. on, on what you guys kind of, uh, receive through that. That's, that's a really cool thing to do. Megan, thanks for yeah. calling in. This is, this is awesome. Um, yeah. Thank you for your witness. I'm, I'm looking forward to the day that we're all back under one roof. Yes, me too. Thank you so much. Have a good one. See you, Megan. It was good talking to you. Bye. Bye.
Okay, I missed I missed two calls from Houston. Megan, thanks for calling. That was awesome. That was really good advice. Um, let's see if we can call this number back. You guys will have to be you have to bear with me here. Let's see how this works. <sighs> Kind of Hello? Who is this? This is Savannah. Savannah, it's Johnny. Hi. What are you doing? We're all back under one roof. I'm watching live right now. Correct. Correct. That's the correct answer. Sorry, I missed I missed all of your calls. Okay, I missed oh, two calls from Houston. It's all right. Oh, I can oh, hear you. I can hear advice. double. I can hear myself coming through the call. It's like it's like Johnny Inception. That's really weird. Yeah. So t tell us about your quarantine. How's your how's your shelter in place going? Oh darn! I, okay, I was gonna. I'm watching the live, so I'm really confused. And I was gonna do like a British accent and pretend I was someone else. But it didn't work. It. I mean, you could have fooled me. I'm. I'm a sucker for a good accent. But. Uh, <laughs> well, the accent's not great, but it's okay. Let's hear it. We need to hear it, anyways. Uh, I, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> You're gonna pass. Okay. If, I'm if gonna pass this time. Anybody who knows uh, knows me knows that I can do a really good King Julian accent um, from Madagascar. Oh. Uh, would you like to hear it? You should, you should do it. Okay, yes. this is mainly because Kayla's watching, and I know it brings her a lot of joy. <laughs> I'm King Julian. I'm the best. That's not oh that my good. God. But it's like, if I can really get on a rant, like on ski retreat, I just, uh, I played King Julian one night and just couldn't, couldn't stop talking like him. And it brought me a lot oh, of joy. Oh, dear. Yeah. He's, he, we, he awesome. has a lot to teach us. He has a whole lot to teach us. Um, Savannah, tell oh, us yeah. about what's your shelter in place been like? It's absolutely terrible. Terrible? Why is I'm it terrible? Already, yes, I'm already a procrastinator, so my laziness has just gotten worse. Really? Because there's no deadlines. Yeah. And I just, I lay around all day. <laughs> Sounds so, like a dream for a lot of people. Uh, I hate it. Really? So yeah. would you would you rather be I'm, in school or would you rather be in our current situation? I'd much rather be in school. Do you do you like school normally? Uh, Are you a fan of going to school? Well, I like seeing my friends. Yeah, that's fair. What's it like to have friends? Yeah. I'm asking, you know, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> well, I don't have that many, but it's it's really nice. When you get like married, you get to have one friend for the rest of your life, and it's great. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I can't. I can't wait for that. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah I, I can't mean, wait to have someone that I can, you know, really annoy. Be best friends with. Yeah, I have that too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so tell tell everybody yeah. at home what what's been your. So I mean, laying around that's a good one. But what what have you been using to pass the time with? What have you been doing? Um, definitely FaceTime. Nice, yeah. So, I'm not, like, by the time noon comes around, I'm, like, at 20% because I FaceTime people. <laughs> yeah, it goes by quick. It goes by quick then. Yep. So, uh... Yeah. Uh, you might have heard the conversation with Megan. What, what's gonna... I love hearing these. Yes. What's gonna be the first thing you do when we're released from the shelter in place? Oh... I want to hang out with friends so bad. Hang out with friends. And like, yeah, I I want to like, we've gone to the store and like gone to eat fast food and stuff. Yeah. But now like, was it getting more serious? We're not going anymore. Yeah. But I'm going straight for all the fast food chains I can possibly make it to. What's the first one? And I'm just going to, oh, I don't know. That one's hard. It's not Chick Fil A. Sonic. Oh gosh, you're such a high yeah, schooler, yeah. man. The drinks. The drinks. Okay, is I, where it's at. I I guess I get that. That was a big thing when when Kayla and I were in high school. Sonic was like the thing. <laughs> um, yes. And like it's all. So easy. It is easy, and it was fun, and it was like 
communal, but yeah. you know, it just like yeah. Now nowadays, it's like uh-huh. us boring adults. Yep. It's like Chick Fil A, and that's probably it. But um, yeah. So what yep. have you been doing? Uh, like uh, you, we haven't been able to go to mass. Have you been able to watch mass online? Yes. So on Sunday. I actually slept in on accident, <laughs> and I missed I missed the morning live streams. Um, and I was like, "Oh, no problem. There's one in the afternoon," but there wasn't. So there wasn't at oh, four o'clock. I watched. Oh, I didn't see one. Oh, I don't know. But um, at four o'clock, I watched the nine o'clock live stream. <laughs> oh well, th- I mean that's one way to do it. That's. That's uh, yeah. That's kind of the advantage. Yeah. What, how's that been like for you watching Mass on online instead of being uh, there? I mean, it's definitely faster. And <laughs> it's easier for me to pay attention, actually. Is it? Why, why do you think that I is? Like, I don't know. I just get really distracted in Mass. And, like, I don't know. But I do, I do like going to church more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, definitely, it's definitely hard not being there. Um. Yeah. What would you say this this whole experience has taught you about your relationship with God? Has it has it showed you anything about our faith that um, maybe was new? It's definitely made it more important to me because, like, this is the time where we really need God, and our churches have shut down. Yeah. So, like, I like, I mean, I'm not old, but I this is like the first time I've seen the church actually like been really affected by something. And so it's kind of like, it's kind of like teaching us like, don't take this for granted, Uh you know? Yeah. So, I mean, and this is the, it, this is the first time that I keep saying this, I keep saying this in videos and live streams and stuff like this, but, um, this is the first time that pretty much anyone that's currently alive is experiencing anything like this. Like any anybody yeah. you ask, like yeah. I I've had a few conversations over the past couple weeks with um like pretty much every priest that I know and uh even talking to the priests that are like later on in their life, like they're a little bit older, they they all say like nothing like this has ever happened before. So yeah, it's it's concerning yeah. but um, crazy. Yeah. So what are you doing to uh kind of like keep keep that relationship with the Lord going what what's your um what kind of feedback could you give us to help us continue our faith I usually I usually like you know do my nightly prayer and all that stuff but now it's like so important for me to thank God for every day yeah and like just thank him for everything I can do because like even though even though I'm cooped up in the house I'm not sick you know so yeah. that's really I'm really fortunate for that. And I've also, um, I'm doing this book study. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I forgot what the name of the book was, (laughs) but (laughs) is it the one with uh, Kayla? Yes. It's the one with Kayla. And, uh, our deadline to read the first part is Friday. And going to be honest, I have not read it, but I will read it by Friday. Perfect. You got two days. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. But it is, it's a really small book, so I won't have a problem with that. But is it, I'm really, I, I've never, like, read a prayer book, so I'm really excited to do that. It's, is it Life of the Beloved? No, it's... Uh, starts with an S. <laughs> Wait, let me... I think I, I think I have it. Oh, I found it. It is Searching for and Maintaining Peace. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, yes, that's a great one. So spiritual reading for anybody listening, that's, that's a great way to like, in this kind of period of unknown where like, what can I be doing? That's something that a lot of times, um, like my list of books that I've been wanting to read, uh, is, has been just growing and growing the past couple years. So I, I need to be using this time to kind of catch up on that. So that's good. Savannah, thanks yes. for calling. I, I really appreciate all your wisdom. Thank you. Well, we'll hopefully see you very, very soon. Yes, absolutely. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Let's take uh, let's take a couple more. Let's see if this one answers. Yeah. 
Kayla, Kayla's getting on you, Savannah. You got to read your book. Hello? Alexandra. Johnny. You are live right now in front of thousands of people. I really? Thousands. Wow, that's crazy. I know. How how does this newfound fame feel? I mean, it feels really great, you know, just um, being on here. It's fantastic. You look great today. Did I mention that? Thank you. Yeah. I tried really hard. Like, I really did. I'm wearing a good shepherd shirt. Uh, middle school ministry shirt today. That's, Fun fact. That's a great shirt. Laura is the queen of t-shirt design. Um, like she. Yeah, it's the one with the thumbprint on the back of it. It's my favorite one. That's a yeah, great shirt. It's really great. That's a really great shirt. Uh, Alexandra, how you are the token extrovert. I I can't imagine anyone <laughs> that is more extroverted than you. So how has this? How has the quarantine been treating you? Um, awful. I hate it so much. Um, Tell us how you really I've feel. Been, I really, um, I've just been in my room. I, I've recently been FaceTiming people. Me and my lead group um, from this past summer had a really big FaceTime last night. Nice. And I FaceTimed with them for five hours. Oh my gosh. Um, I went to bed at 5 a.m. because of it. Oh, so that was great. Oh, jeez <laughs> um, So, but it's been really, like, bad. I've just been kind of doing nothing and procrastinating school. So, yeah. If, if you're watching right like now, I, I want to know if anybody is staying up later than Alexander. Comment on this video how late you stay up. I, the answer for me last night was 9.30 p.m is what time I went to bed. And I and I absolutely loved every second of it. I woke up twice because of little people, but but uh, it, it was miraculous going to bed that early. Um, okay, but, okay, so I procrastinate work, so I can't work and do, like, papers and stuff, like, a good amount of time before they're due, so I'll start them the night before or the day of, and so, but I work better at night. So I stay up uh, later and yeah. like do stuff because like I'm just a night person. Yeah, that makes sense. And so then I wake up really late and I, but I stay up really late. So my sleep schedule is like messed up and that's why I'm staying up so late. I get that. Um, okay. So tell us what have you, so you've been, uh, for those of you who don't know what Alexander is talking about, lead is called Francisca and lead, which is a group of students <laughs> who, get together before Steubenville conferences and they help put on the yes. conference and it's like an awesome community. So community is really important right now and we have to find it in new ways, uh, which is which is kind of outside of our comfort zone. What else have you been doing, Alexander, to strengthen your faith and stay, um, stay tight with the Lord during this kind of uh, time of unknown? Um, well, so for Lent, I'm doing this devotional, Uh um, that Stephanie actually, um, bought for a bunch of the core team and Uh we paid her back for it. Nice. Um, it's from Blessed HD, it's called Year Two. Yeah. And so I've been doing that, um, every morning. And then I'm also doing the Be Not Afraid conference. Nice. Um, online. And I think to me, like, it's just such a really good way to like get a message every single day and like have something to focus on. That's awesome. Um, and to like strive to do for that day and to like pour into the Lord. Um, and if like anyone else like doesn't know what to do and how to strengthen the relationship, like you can still sign up for the conference Yeah. and still have access to all of the videos. So it's something I definitely would recommend to like People who like conference type things and like getting a message from people, uh-huh. um, I think it's a really great way to like have something yeah. like every single day that you can look forward to. And plus, your favorite youth minister has a talk that's coming up. So, um, you know, oh, does he really? I've been I've been waiting for it, Johnny. I was I was I've just for it. I was like, just waiting for the joke that you were going to say like, oh, Kayla has a talk coming up. No, uh, yeah, I made I made some great dad jokes. Uh, so you know, just watch oh, for I that. Oh, I don't doubt it for a second. 
I don't doubt it for a second. Oh man. Well, Alexandra, thank you for You're calling. For the best. Uh, we're You're gonna, so welcome. We're going to keep trucking, and I'm praying for all the extroverts out there who are uh, yes. are realizing how great it is to be an introvert. No, it's not great. I hate it. I've been binge watching Netflix. Do you watch Tiger I've King been yet? Watching? No, but I've been watching The Vampire Diaries. Yeah. And I started it maybe a week and a half ago, and there's eight seasons, and I just started season six. Oh my gosh. Jeez Louise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Netflix is probably doing amazing right now. Um, yeah. Stephanie so. goes to bed at 11. See that? Or, no, no, I'm sorry, Olivia. That's that's way more reasonable, Olivia. Laura's here too. Laura, if you missed it, we were complimenting your t shirt design. Um, Alexandra's mm -hmm. wearing one of your, really good. your great t shirts. Um, Alexandra, thanks for calling. I hope to see you soon, my friend. No problem. Peace. Okay. Uh, we've got. Two very special calls that I want to take in in a few minutes, which is uh, from Anna Polanco and uh, her husband Brad, who I think have have a really unique perspective to offer us. Because Anna, if you don't know, is a nurse at Baylor in Grapevine, and her husband Brad is a police officer. So they're both kind of on the front lines of of all of this. I think that's a really unique perspective. So we're gonna call them, but I, I wanna take, uh, I just missed another call, um, but there's no caller ID. So if you just called, feel free to call back. And while you're doing that, we have uh, we have a very special shout out we need to make. Let's just call this person real quick. Boo doo 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 Hello? Kayla, you're live. Oh, hello. I need to mute you on my computer. Yeah, you do need to do that. We're just checking in, making sure you're alive. All the this is the theme of this episode is extroverts who are dying. So I thought of you. I'm actually doing phenomenal. Like oh, living good. my best life. How are you doing I that? I haven't as, seen as you in a, like a month. Well, that's not true. You saw me. Uh, it's been a couple weeks. Yeah, I made you play hopscotch. You're right. I know that was like. It was like a it week and a half or so. Yeah, if, if you guys didn't see that, did we put that on a highlight on Instagram? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, go go check that out. That was Kayla spent far too many hours putting together this little like hopscotch obstacle course. Uh, I had to drop off like her iPad at her house and it was extensive. It was the work of a lunatic. I am doing... I'm just doing all the things that bring me joy. I'm spending this time because this world is just kind of crazy right now. And so I'm spending this time doing the things that bring me a whole lot of joy. Like hammocking. Yeah. My hammock's up right now. Yeah. It's going to rain. But you know what? I can hammock and read for all my discipleship groups. So. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. I that That's one thing I've been kind of doing too is uh, – like you see all the headlines for the the coronavirus stuff and all of them are like total clickbait whether they're good or bad yeah. they want you to click this video and watch it and i've been like trying to intentionally uh like watch the the documentaries and the movies and stuff that like i've been wanting to watch for a while and like and the tiger king one like the tiger king which is like <laughs> Just a no, gift you from didn't the watch Lord. that one. I did watch Tiger King. I'm not lying. Oh my gosh, Jonathan! I I had to. I I had to. <laughs> I had I, to see what the people were talking about. Well, it wasn't even that. It was it was my pregnant wife, who is so much more powerful than I am, who said, yeah. "We're watching this," and I yeah, I, I, have I to. wouldn't I wouldn't want to fight Julie. No, she's she's fierce like a tiger. Yeah, she um, really is. What uh, what do you want to say to all the people? You're, this is you're in front of thousands of people right now. I don't know if you know that, but what what do you want to say to all the students out there? Besides, uh, you know, besides OU isn't very good at you know many things. Things mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say do the things right now that are bringing you joy. That bring you joy, whether that is going outside for walks. I know that I got to go on a walk this morning for um, a few hours, actually. I spent some time outside. Nice. Um, being outside is so helpful with this whole process. Um, 
of just like kind of reconnecting, just go listen to what is outside. Um, yeah. So often in this time, we don't like in our busy lives. I know in my busy life, I don't get to just take time to enjoy the very simple things. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I've been, I know the Lord has been calling me back to is enjoying very simple things. Um, and then in a very profound way, what I was reading in the scriptures this morning, he just is calling me um, gently back to trust him. Um, yeah. And so this time has been, um, as much as it isn't um, my normal job of being a youth minister and getting to be with all of our students all the time, it's been such a profound um, experience of just getting to really dive into um, what the Lord is asking of me, um, what the Lord is asking of us for this ministry. Um, and so it's kind of been um, a really beautiful thing because he makes all things um, good. He makes all things good. So yeah, that's great. Even through the bad, like all things are good. If you if so. you didn't see it, Kayla put up um, a bunch of stuff on the Instagram about the rosary. And we've had, we've had a few students kind of reach out and say that they um, – have been uh, trying new forms of prayer, and ro- the rosary is one that Julie and I have been able to pray more together uh, yeah. as a couple, and that's been that's been awesome. So um, yeah, we're we're more available than ever to yeah. if you have uh, if you have any questions or or just you you want advice, like we're we're more available than ever. So reach out to Kayla or myself, and we'll we'll be happy to teach you about. Um, different forms of prayer that you can try during this time. Yeah, we've um, we've actually worked really hard on the um, doing social stuff. And I know that there's a lot of things out there. Um, as far as social media content, everybody's online. Um, there's just so many places to go. And so we want to make things available to you through your specific people that are putting it on that you know um, and that you trust and that you love um, and not just going anywhere for things. But yeah. We're kind of doing a, a survival kit quarantine style. So everything that I put on, so like the rosary, um, there's kind of a prayer and ask for a gift um, or a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it actually asks for a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So like when you pray the rosary, you're asking the Holy Spirit and um, to build, you know, a spirit of gentleness within you. So each time there's a different thing that goes with it. Um, but it's also a way to say, yeah, have I prayed the rosary? Because that's an intensely powerful um, way that we can connect with um, the Lord and also our mother. So Yeah, yeah, that's great. So check out, if you're not, follow us on Instagram. And um, Kayla's mm-hmm. been super active on there. I've been doing my best to let you know um, when one of us is going on a particular live stream. So definitely check that out. Kayla, I hope you're uh, not driving your your poor mother too crazy. She deserves the world, and, and you need to be gentle to her. Oh, the Lord and Mother Mary is giving me a whole lot of gentleness. Trust me. Well, return that gentleness to your earthly mother. <laughs> oh, Nellie will uh, Nellie will enjoy that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you later on. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Peace. All right, everyone. Uh, I'm going to call Anna Polanco. If you don't know Anna, she is, uh, she's been involved with Renovate for uh, many years now, since, since the beginning of Renovate. Um, and she, uh, she's constantly... Hello? There she is. Right, Anna. Yes. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm good. You just, I, I was bragging on you before you answered. So if, if you don't know Anna, Anna has been involved uh, with Renovate since the very beginning. She's been uh, singing at Renovate for three years now, been a small group leader for three years now. Um, when when Renovate first started, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you and Brad had just started dating and now you're married and uh, and you're like working at a hospital. Like, just tell us what has, uh, what has this all been like? The, so, um, just with COVID coming out, what, what's, what's work been like? Um, well, work has, it's felt like walking into the fire in a lot of ways, but, um, not in, not in a fearful sense, just like in a sense of like, geez, I don't know. I don't know what's coming. And that's because, I mean, 
I don't think any hospital in the world could have prepared for something like this. Yeah. And so from the very like logistics standpoint, you're like, you know, what's going to happen next? Yeah. Um, fortunately, I am not currently dealing with positive cases of it. So I've been okay. But I mean, you're in a hospital at some point you've been exposed. Right. Um, so I'm also thankful that we're two healthy people. And if anybody's going to get it, I know that we would have a better chance of fighting it than, you know, the elderly or someone with underlying um, conditions or something like that. So, yeah. Um, what, what is the, like the, just the general um, demeanor been like at work? Like are, I'm sure people are maybe less optimistic than normal. Uh, less optimistic and just a little bit eerie on, Hey, what can we do? Also, because not too much is known about the disease. And um, I don't know if you have seen the news. I haven't been watching it, but obviously they're telling us the hospital, hey, it spreads this way. No, it spreads this way. Yeah. Um, But then also in another sense, it's been like, yes, I get to go to work and and see people and talk to people. So (laughs) there's been a lot of joy in that sense. I'm like, I cannot wait to go to work. Yeah. Yeah, I I uh, I thought of y'all when I, um, I I ran into Anna's husband in Kroger a couple weeks ago, and uh, and I and I immediately kind of thought like there's been a lot of content put out online. Um, there's there's so many people like myself included. Like I was kind of not really creating any um, any video content or any any content really at all until this started, and now there's a whole flood of it. Um, but I think I think the people that um, aren't getting a chance to have their voices heard are the people who are on the front lines who are seeing this firsthand. Um, mm-hmm. So what what's kind of your? Uh, I, I think it's easy for us for people like me who are just staying in their house and uh, for like like to the best of my knowledge, I haven't come in contact with anyone that actually has coronavirus. So it's mm-hmm. easy for me to kind of say like, oh, well, you know, like here's here's how I'm keeping my spirits high and here's how I'm keeping my faith strong. But to be honest, like I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. I'm away from all the craziness. How are you kind of keeping your, your hope uh, and, and your faith kind of where it needs to be during, during this kind of time of unknown? So I would say on a, from, from like a work standpoint, um, I do work for a faith-based hospital, which is just, I mean, that has just bloomed so much during the past few weeks. Um, instead of having just like morning and evening prayer where they like read scripture aloud over the intercom system. Now we're doing like an afternoon prayer, which seems like, it seems like nothing, but at, at least at midnight when I'm working, cause I work at night or, you know, during the day, it just makes you stop and reflect and be thankful for the things you have. Yeah. And then I think I've really adopted that and, brought, you know, brought it home. Um, just thinking about, Hey, like I have so much to be thankful for. And I think take coronavirus away, take, take, take the name of that away and give any other situation. Um, I cannot remember who told me that, but there was a priest whenever I was on retreat, um, whenever I was in middle school or high school, mm-hmm. and he said, no matter the season, like no matter what's going on in your life, there's always a fruit that God is asking you to look for. And so I thankfully adopted that outlook a long time ago, and it's helped me get through several hard times. And now this one, I'm like, okay, God, like, what is it that I need to be thankful for today, yeah. this hour, this minute? And then you just move forward. I mean, I don't have, I don't have any reason to be afraid. Yeah. Like there's nothing to fear at all for me, at least, you know, and I think whenever we do get enveloped in our own fears, it's easy to just go down that rabbit hole really quick. Mm-hmm. So What's your advice for anyone who's uh, who's particularly afraid right now? Um, open your Bible. Nice, yeah. Open your Bible. Have some quiet time with the Lord because um, your fearful thoughts that you're having are, are not from Him at all. Yeah, yeah. And I think that whenever you can read some truth, you start acting and living that way. Mm, amen. So, yeah, I was talking with uh, with Alov yesterday, 
And um, I think one of the, the good things about coronavirus, I think there's been a lot of good things about it, as kind of morbid as that sounds, but one of the good things that I've, I've noticed is that we're all just very aware of the reality of our own death. Um, mm -hmm. which is like, we're constantly told in scripture, like, like be prepared, um, constantly think about the day of your death, which is sound, sounds right. so weird because it, of, because of kind of the, the way that the world tells us to approach death. Um, mm -hmm. but we're all kind of aware of it right now. You keep seeing all right. the numbers that saying like, you know, 40% of us could die and, and I guess, like, my, my first thought, which I know is so much easier said than done, is mm -hmm. when St. Paul says, to die is to gain, I no longer have, I, it's no longer me that lives, but Christ that lives within me. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's easier said than done until you're looking death in the face. But I think just reflecting on that and having hope of, of life in the next like then there mm -hmm. could be nothing that you know. Andrew used the example of Saint Lawrence, who was grilled alive, um, and he kind of laughed at the face of death, you know, by saying mm -hmm. like, "I'm done on this side. Flip me over." Being burned alive, and uh, right. like Saint Bartholomew, who was skinned alive, and he held up his own skin, like kind of, kind of making fun of death, saying, "There's nothing you can do to scare me because Christ lives within me." Um, yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, but absolutely it's easier true. said than done, you know. Um, uh, did Brad just get home? I heard puppies. No, my dogs just bark at everything oh. that walks by our window. <laughs> that's fair. How many dogs do you have? 12? 13? I have three. Three. That sounds like a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you want two more? No, thank you. Anybody I'm that's good. listening, all thousand of you. Uh, free dog. We have two amazing dogs that uh, need a really good home. Um, and they'll be at Anna's house if you want to go visit them. <laughs> um, so just stop by any time. Don't feel like you need to call ahead. Just stop by and uh, come play with the dogs and then maybe take them. Not now. Not now. But, maybe later. Not now. Maybe later. Time. Um, so, tell, so you are pretty newly married, right? Has it, it hasn't mm -hmm. been a year yet, right? No. No, in July. In July. So mm -hmm. uh, what has been... The, how how has this kind of uh, you're towards the end of your first year? I remember the first year of marriage with Julie. We just learned a lot about each mm -hmm. other. What have you mm -hmm. learned about marriage and about your husband during this this time? Um. Oh gosh, I mean, our prayers have definitely changed uh -huh. as far as like whenever we're praying in bed. I'm trying to think if there's something specific that I learned about him. Um, he's a man of his word and of, of his morals. And I think that that has shown more true, you know, as like not fun. Sometimes it might feel that like, okay, yay, I get to go out in public and possibly contract this, uh -huh. especially for him because he's not dealing with, you know, hospital patients who like, you know, pretty much indefinitely if they're symptomatic or not, yeah. he's dealing with the community. And so, um, as far as like, oh gosh, I don't know, like learning from him, like he's like, you know what? I, I took an oath and like, this is what I'm going to do. And he hasn't been afraid either. Just really taking on, uh, power of the Holy spirit and mother yeah. Mary. And yeah, I don't know if there's something like more specific than that. I feel like no, I mean, that's life great. has not changed like too, too much for us just because we are still working. Uh -huh. Um, but our conversations at dinner or prayers at nighttime, they've definitely changed and just becoming more thankful for good health and then yeah. praying for the people that we're going to encounter the next day has yeah. probably been our biggest thing. That's, I mean, that's huge. I, I think it's, um, you know, like every year that has gone by that I've been married to Julie, we just continue to learn more and more about each other. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've just been thinking, like, uh, like I, I remember when she was, like, seven or eight months pregnant with Georgia, and mm -hmm. I remember thinking, like, uh, we were so stinking excited for her to get here, and you know how, you know when you're so excited for something, and it feels like it, it's just never going to get here, um, mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden, it's like, like, 
you snap a finger and all of a sudden they're here or you're, whatever it is that you were looking forward to is is here and then mm -hmm. 10 years go by and you're like oh my gosh remember when i was so excited like georgia is saying fool sentences now and like bossing her sister around and i'm <laughs> i just think back to like man i remember when i couldn't wait for you to get here um mm -hmm. and like i was we were we've been going on a lot of walks and i was walking today thinking like how how quickly the past two years have gone by and how quickly the next 50 60 70 will go by and all of a sudden it's or or sooner and all of a sudden it's our chance to to meet the lord um, right which i think has been just helping everybody with um with that faithfulness and acknowledging blessings and and just a spirit of gratitude which um I think gets pushed to the side so quickly, you know? I think a spirit of gratitude and um, a lot of self-reflection. And if you take the quiet time that you have and you make it a positive thing, I think it gives you time to think like, hey, am I am I ready to, to meet the Lord right now? In a minute, in an hour tomorrow, where, where am I on that? Would God know me if he saw my face, you know? Or would it have been like, hey, where were you? Yeah. kind of thing so it's given a lot of reflection the other thing too i guess probably i'll share like the only thing that's really like shaken me to my core this whole time was uh last week i was working and um i was thinking or i was taking my lunch break but um our intercom systems go in every like employee area and they had called a um, called for some help up on the unit where our um, COVID patients are being treated, and it happened to be something where it was like a cardiac arrest. So the, I, I don't know if they made it or not. I don't really know anything about the patient. But when that was called over the intercom system, I just I broke like it brought me to tears. And I think the thing that's broken me so much about this experience is that these people are dying alone. Yeah. And I wondered to myself, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know who that is, but it, I was praying for them and praying for the repose of their soul and just wondering like, man, I hope they knew the Lord. Yeah. I hope they did. Cause you just don't know when your last day is going to be. Yeah. So. That's, that's been really hard. Um, just to think about, to think about that. Um, one thing that kind of, uh, it almost brought me to tears was when a, uh, a friend of mine who, uh, his wife is like eight months pregnant and, mm -hmm. um, she got like a kidney infection. And so she had to go to the hospital for that. Um, and he couldn't go visit her. And so mm -hmm. what he called, I, I actually called him or no, I'm sorry. He called me. We were talking about like the stock market or something off topic. And, and he, uh, he asked what I was doing, and I said I was just hanging out with the family, and I asked what he was doing. And he, he said he was sitting on the sixth floor of the parking garage, uh, mm -hmm. who, oh, we got a little two-year-old who's going to join us. Come here, Georgia. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Georgia. Yeah, you see yourself? So uh, he, he was sitting on the sixth floor of the parking garage playing guitar for his wife because his wife could see him out of the window. And, and it broke my heart. I was like, oh my gosh, like you can't be there for your loved ones. And it's like a really good reminder that we need, just like scripture says, we, we have to love the Lord more than we love our mom or our dad or our spouse or our children. Like it, and it, like we have to constantly be seeking like, Lord, do I love you and put you before all things, especially mm -hmm. during this time. Mm hmm. No, I completely agree. Um, my husband, Brad, is just walking in. Do you want to? Yes, Brad, are you any there? questions? Hold on one second. I'm going to put you on speaker. Okay, he can hear you. Brad, what's up, man? How are you doing, Johnny? Oh, I'm, I'm doing good. We're just living the dream. Georgia's on here, too, and she's really into seeing herself in the, the monitor to the side. Uh, I don't blame her at all. She's a beauty. She's a beauty and she's a star. She needs her own TV show. I'd watch it every day. So, Brad, what we Anna and I have been talking a little bit about um, just like, you know, there's been so many videos that have been coming out of uh, people like me who are bored and who are just hopping on videos and podcasts and stuff. And they're, they're great, but the, like you and Anna are 
a great example of people who are on the front lines that I feel like we don't get to hear from as much. So what, what how has the past, I don't know, three or four weeks, however long this has been going, how, how has it been for you at work as a, as a police officer? What's it been like? Um, me personally, it's been a, it's been an adjustment. Um, I think I, I'm very busy normally when I'm at work. So yeah. the slower pace for me is, is definitely an adjustment. Mm-hmm. However, I, I'm not minding, um, education, public education on just enlightening people, what's going on in the world. Um, this is something that is, it's serious. It, it's, it's not only hurting people, it's, it's killing people. Yeah. So, we have to really, really be careful in, you know, who we contact and how we handle our day to day operation at the police department. But it's an adjustment, but everything in life is an adjustment. We just take the you just take it and roll with it. That this is all happening for a reason. So I love that. What well, so uh, you for for those of those of us who don't know you, you came into the church uh, what, two two year two years ago, three years ago, something like that? Exactly two years ago today. Oh my gosh! Happy happy <laughs> bap- baptism anniversary. Yes, that's I, awesome. I guess so. Happy uh, engagement anniversary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So here, why don't you tell us the story for for all the teenage girls out there who want to get engaged? <laughs> Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell it for all the, the teenage boys who hope to find the perfect who girl. Who need an day. idea, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I can give you that idea for Let's sure. Let's hear it. Um, so find somebody who is invested in you more than you are invested in yourself. Yeah. Find somebody who's going to love you unconditionally. Um, in my particular instance, I was a police officer in another city than I am currently. Uh-huh. I got hurt. Um, and when I got hurt, I wanted to devote, to devote myself to something bigger and devote myself to God. Um, also, in doing that, I happened to meet my wife at the same time while I was injured. And I was sitting behind a desk and uh, pushing paperwork and, you know, just not being a police officer. Um, and when I had met her, everything kind of turned around. Uh, my whole life turned around and that was a prime example of God entering my life through my wife. Yeah. Um, and every day has been wonderful. (laughs) 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 Um, but it, it just, it, it, it was something that, that words don't, don't really explain. Um, the only thing I can really compare it to is God just answers prayers. Um, I'm a little older than my wife. I'm five years older than my wife. Um, but I had prayed every day, you know, to find somebody that was better than me in every single way. And I, I knew it almost immediately when I had met my wife that that she was something different and something that I wasn't used to. Tell me the engagement story. You, you want to know the engagement oh, story? I, I want to know both. To I, no, I want to know both. Everybody wants to hear the engagement story? Yeah. Um, so, you know, after after dating for a little while, I decided to commit to RCIA mm-hmm. and become Catholic. And On his own. It, everybody asked me by name and I didn't. She didn't. Flirt to convert. They, it works. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I went through the RCIA process, and I, to me, RCIA was the biggest step in my life. I can do a million things and be good at them, but devoting myself to Catholicism was the one thing I knew I would be great at. Yeah. And that's what I chose. So I went through that process, and my wife, being the loving, caring person she is, actually was an RCIA sponsor at the same exact time. So she went to the classes with me every single night and sponsored somebody else. Nice. Um, so it was a godsend that I had somebody else to kind of rely on. And there was a lot of tough times in my job at the at the time. So, you know, we she just kind of helped me through everything, you know. And I knew that if the most important thing in my life was going to be to convert to Catholicism and to dedicate my life to it, then why not do it on the footsteps of the church? So yeah. the night that I got baptized and I committed myself to God and I erased all my sin, my original sin, and devoted myself to this religion, I devoted myself 100% to my wife and asked her to marry me on the footsteps of uh, Good Shepherd. Uh, I love that. There's a video out there that um, Julie and I watched, I don't know, 400 times, something like that. I just <laughs> And uh, – yeah, I mean, I love that. It just even, even just like y- y- celebrating the work that you did, receiving 
all of your sacraments of initiation and then immediately committing to another sacrament, like same yes. night, which is just like <laughs> many of us uh, who are like credo Catholics will never get uh, an opportunity to step out in faith like that. Um, yeah. I thought that was awesome. So what, what's your advice for kind of, Anna and I talked about this too. Um, you know, like people, people like me who are just kind of hanging out at home, uh, yeah. and we're introverted and we're kind of living our best life. Don't stay home. Stay, yeah. I mean, stay home, but like, uh, you know, like just kind of the spirit of fear that, um, people who are in the situation like me, mm-hmm. it, we don't really have as much of an, a reason to be, you know, like kind of encompassed in that fear than you and Anna do. So what's kind of your advice for like dealing with uh, fear during this time and like how can we kind of turn that to the Lord? Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I know and, and just because I, I come from a place where I'm, if I'm not afraid, then I'm not I'm not doing my job correctly. Yeah. Um, so to me, the way I channel my fear is I, I just speak openly to God. I will have open conversations out loud. Um, anytime I need to clear my brain, I'm not afraid to just talk to God. Yeah. Uh, that, that's kind of my, my fallback when I just, even, I just got to clear my head. Even when, you know, I'm just having a really rough day or a busy day. I just open my mouth and let my word speak. I, whatever comes from my mouth is strictly coming from my heart. Yeah. So, yeah, and your heart speaks so much louder than like anything you can think to say. You know, like that's that's kind of Georgia's showing me a. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see. She's showing me a catalog of ice cream, and she's she's really excited to share that with us. I like where her heart is. She, her yeah. heart is focused heart on ice cream, and and that's the place to be. She's uh, not wrong. She's not wrong at all, and. Yeah, I uh, I love that, and I I mean I I pray for you guys and for people who are in um, the same capacity of work that you are every day. It's I mean, like we're we're counting our blessings, getting this time to stay together as a family, and um, really this has been a very very fruitful time for us. Um, so my heart constantly goes out to you guys. So I mean, thank you both oh. for for uh, what you're doing and to just. Um, keep everybody healthy and safe and uh allowing us to just like you know be with our families and um absolutely well and we we appreciate you giving us the time to kind of tell a little bit about ourselves and one thing we'll ask of you if you don't mind to uh, to everybody that's watching is we recently had a friend who possibly came in contact with a COVID-19 um person another officer another officer so we would definitely say prayers for his family if we can that Hopefully, when he does get his test, it comes out negative. And yeah. If it is positive, then give him the strength to pull through. I pray for his wife too; she's pregnant. We oh really? Yeah, we definitely mm-hmm. we definitely need to pray for him. That that has been uh, that that's there's like a certain um, I, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but for me, like I I had a friend who uh, was a groomsman in our wedding who. Uh, like he he got it in New York and um, texted me last week and Georgia you gotta you gotta stop talking about your ice cream for a little bit. Um, he caught it and texted us and said that he had it and all of a sudden it went from like a news headline to this is affecting someone I love, um, mm-hmm. which is which is crazy. I'm trying to air off. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely pray for him. Do you uh, do you guys have um, any last words, any words of encouragement for the thousands and thousands of people that are watching right now? Yes, this is this absolutely. is a crazy Stay home. last. Stay home. Parents, do not get mad at me for saying that, but buy your child a video game and keep them inside. <laughs> Stay home, and this will go down. I saw the funniest thing. It said this will go down as the lentiest Lent ever. Yeah, this is this is the hardest Lent that we're all taking part of at the same time this is like everybody in the world giving up coffee um, yes except 10 times worse so yeah that's all julie and i brad your your advice is great julie and i went and (laughs) we set up uh my brother's Wii, and um i played it for like 30 seconds and then it was immediately taken captive by a certain pregnant lady that will go without me (laughs) but uh yeah, Julie so <laughs> do stuff to entertain your kids, and if you're running out of ideas, then, um, you know. And wash your hands. Go wash your hands. <laughs> yep, go wash your hands. And one more last thing for yeah. all of you who are like, I don't know what to do, I have nothing to do. Yes, you do. If you're not doing anything, open your Bible and pray, or think about, don't buy a puppy. Think about all the things. <laughs> 
that you want to do when you're not home. Yeah. Like, gosh, if I was home, I would blank. Yeah. Um, go do those things. Go do those things. Yeah, I I keep thinking about the uh, it's it's kind of comparable, but the the parable of the talent when when the Lord gave like one man you know ten talents and gave another man like four, gave another man two, and then gave another guy one, and the guy who had one talent. Uh, which, you know, basically, it, we're talking about talent, but same thing as, you know, a blessing from the Lord. Uh, yeah, you're showing everybody your ice cream. This is George's ice cream menu. Uh, <laughs> every option you can choose from. But anyways, the guy, the guy was so scared that he would lose it that he went and buried it, but God said, I gave you that for a reason. And so God gave us this time for a reason. Um, I keep saying this, but th from the moment that, that the Lord said, let there be light, and he saw that it was good, he knew that this moment would happen and that we would take part in it in the exact capacity that we are. And he trusts us enough to allow us to be part of this time in history. So it's up for us to not bury the blessing of having this time and it's up, you know, to use it for his glory. Um, so yeah, thank you guys both so much. Do you, do you want to join me in our, our closing prayer? Yeah, absolutely. Georgia, do you have anything you want to say? Georgia say cookies. Can you say cookies? Cookies. <laughs> Georgia, what's your name? Georgia. And how old are you? Two. Twos. And yeah. what is your favorite color? Three. No, not three. Is it green? It's green. And do you like ice cream or cookies? Cookies. Cookies. Okay. <laughs> Good deal. Who do you want to pray for, Georgia? Georgia. You want to pray for Georgia? Okay, we'll pray for Georgia. All right. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for all of the blessings that you have bestowed on us that we have forgotten yes, to thank sir. you for. Um, Lord, I, I pray that you would bless Brad and Anna and the, all those who work um, on the front lines, Lord, that they would just uh, feel anointed with your peace and your protection. Lord, we pray especially for um, uh, Brad's friend who uh, is, is sick. We pray that he would just experience healing in the name of your son, Jesus, that he would just be washed um, from everything that is not of you, Lord and that you would just console him and all those who are affected by the coronavirus during this time. Lord, we pray for um, those who are fearful that they would uh, just offer that fear to you and you would replace it with a spirit of gratitude and spirit of peace. Lord, we pray um, for families that they would just be united to your heart. And uh, finally, most importantly, Lord, we pray for those who have died, that you would be with them, that you would bless them, you would console their families, and that you would give us peace uh, in the life of the next with you. And we offer you all of, uh, all of this at the foot of your cross. Mary, we ask that you take those intentions to your son as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace. Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, we pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Anna, Brad, thank you guys so much for joining us. I, I really appreciate it. We're, we're praying for you guys. Thank you. Blessings, Johnny. If y'all need anything, just you, give us a call. You got it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you uh, next week at 6.30. Oh, the only announcement I have, we have a new announcement. video <laughs> announcement. Georgia is just so into seeing herself. We have a, a new video show that we just released on Monday called Heroic Heralds. Um, especially for parents that are watching, it's all about how to build up your domestic church during this time. If you don't know what domestic church means, even more reason to go check it out. But um, all about how you praying with your family, empowering your, your children um, to live a faithful life encompassed in the gospel. So uh, check that out. That's on YouTube. New episode every Monday. And join us every Wednesday for one of these things. We'll have one next week. So I um, appreciate you guys coming and praying with us. We'll see you next week. Anna, Brad, have a good day. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.